All right, guys, welcome back to Nick in China. I'm in Lanzhou today on the first day of my uh, Gansu Silk Road trip. Leaving the mountains and Tibetan monasteries of southern Gansu, I headed north to the provincial capital of Lanzhou. A key point on the old Silk Road, Lanzhou is now a city that a lot of people pass through quickly and write off as just being another city. I, however, fell in love with its laid-back feel. There are plenty of things to keep you entertained here. It does, however, seem a world away from southern Gansu, as the Tibetan Buddhist south gives way to the more Islamic north. So the Yellow River runs through Lanzhou. Actually, it's the only major city that the river uh, runs through, despite being you know, the second longest river in China. It's probably, it's the most important river in China in history and in culture. Um, Mu Qinhe, it's called, Mother River in Chinese, because it's, it's regarded as kind of the cradle of uh, Chinese civilization. It's where all the early, early communities kind of grew up around around the Yellow River. It's also, you know, the great taker of life though, in that historically it flooded a lot, um, you know, really catastrophically, you know, millions and millions of lives lost year on year. Um, however, since you know, the 20th century with the dams and things, um, that's become a much more manageable thing. This year, as you can see from some of the footage I'll be showing you right now, it is actually pretty flooded. Um, a lot of these places, there's like, there should be like lots of bars and things, little places to get a beer and a coffee and a cup of tea by the side of the river, and it's all flooded. So the bridge just behind me is the Zhongshan Bridge. It was the first permanent bridge ever built over the Yellow River. It was built in like the early 1900s by German engineers. Apparently it was actually built in Germany and then transported here and constructed. And apparently it has actually passed its uh, life expectancy, but it's still something of a cultural icon in the city. And uh, as you can see, it's surviving the floods of the Yellow River this year. So when you cross over the Zhongshan Bridge, you enter um, another icon of the city, which is the Bai Ta Gongyuan, the uh, White Pagoda Park, which is all the way up the side of the hill. So it's quite a hike, but it's a wonderful place. Um, we don't have anything like this in Xi'an, certainly. Lots of action as well, lots of stuff going on. For those of you who watch my videos, you'll know that I do like my Chinese park life. doves everywhere. It's like a John Woo movie. It's quite nice up here. Um, it's well worth the walk. So the pagoda at the top of the hill, um, it was built in honour of a fallen Tibetan monk who was on his way to meet the Great Khan. So during the Yuan Dynasty, talking about 1200s to 1300s, uh, China was under the control of the, the Mongol Khans. Um, and he was on his way to meet him and obviously give his, I guess, show his respect or do whatever he needed to do. But when he reached Lanzhou, uh, he died of some mysterious illness and they built the pagoda on top of the hill in his honor. 
Now the pagoda apparently has fallen down before and the current one is a little bit later. It was built in the Ming Dynasty, so kind of talking like between the 13 and 1600s. Cool place though. Quite enjoy my time here. It's, it's busy as well. There's loads of people up here and there's like a little cafe and stuff. It's nice and the views over the city are absolutely insane. This has got to be one of the best designed parks I've ever been to in China. Um, it's really cool. Very different to our parks in the UK. In the UK, like if you go to London, the Royal Parks, they're amazing in their own right, but they're big, open, quite natural, grassy fields, squirrels, swans, attacking kids. Um, whereas parks in China are quite, you know, they are very designed. Walkways, pavilions, um, not much like, open well no no open kind of grass area really um, but this one's beautiful beautiful before any journey up the Silk Road the Lanzhou Museum is a must-see the majority of the museum is devoted to Silk Road artifacts and has a collection of amazing bronzes from a Han Dynasty tomb near the town of Wu Wei the collection's highlight is the Flying Horse of Gansu, a bronze horse with a single foot atop a flying bird. It was discovered in 1969, but dates back around 1800 years. It's one of the most celebrated treasures in China. So I think if you ask um, any person in China, any part of China, to tell you something about Lanzhou, they'll all give you the same answer. And the answer will be something along the lines of Lanzhou Nuro La Mien. It's a really famous uh, noodle dish here, so I'm going to have right now. Lanjo beef noodles can be found absolutely everywhere in China. It's up there with Beijing duck in its fame. This restaurant, Ma Zulu, is one of the most famous noodle places in Lanjo and was pretty damn good. For those of you who don't know, northwestern Chinese food is the best food in the country. If anyone disagrees with that, put it in the comments below. Anyway, let's have a look at what else is on offer. All right, so this is the Zhengning Lu Night Market. Lanzhou is also famous for its night markets as well as its Lanzhou New Orleans, and it is absolutely packed in here. I spent four days in Lanzhou and really enjoyed my time here, much more than I expected to in fact, and I will definitely be back. However, the road northwest was calling. Alright guys, so I'm just about to leave Lanzhou now, getting the train up to Jiangye, which is uh, up the Hersi corridor to proper Silk Road uh, territory. So I'll join you in the, uh, in the next video. Take care, bye bye.